Hello, my friends in the What's in the Makeup chat. Thank you so much for being here live or on the replay, if that happens to be you. Hello, my friends. I'm excited to talk with you today. So much going on on right now that we need to talk about. I want to tell you what I think and I want to hear what y'all have to think here in the collective brain of Mega Bossmas where we help each other not to buy crap and we also speculate about things that we have no idea what the truth is uh, because it's interesting to hear different people's opinions on uh, what's happening here in the community. Oh my gosh, so much happening. So main topics today. Uh, first main topic is that Nikki Tutorials came out as transgender. Uh, so happy that she feels free and that she cannot hold that in anymore and just be, you know, unapologetically herself and just let it all out. Um, but there was a little bit of a uh drama that happened uh, with a woman named Lisa Blandino who goes by Danny California on uh, on Instagram. My husband had to inform me that that's a Red Hot Chili Peppers reference and also my production manager Tabitha, she knew. I didn't know. I thought I liked Red Hot Chili Peppers until I found out I didn't know that, which kind of negates me as a fan, I guess. Um, but anyway, uh, so she threw some shade at Nikki, and we're going to talk about that uh, and the back uh, backlash, no, and the uh, the fallout from that, I guess uh, we could say. And then also definitely want to talk about Kat Von D selling Kat Von D beauty to Kendo brands, why she says it happened, why we think it might have happened. Do we think it's going to save the brand? Uh, and lots and lots to talk about there. I also want to talk about what's on my face today. Um, I've got a couple of products that are of high interest right now. Uh, first of all, I, I am going to do a full review of the Blendiful, uh, but I've got the Blendiful. And I've got the Baby Blendiful from Tati Beauty. I used them for the first time today, so I can give you a little bit of a first impression, just a little bit on that. But we're going to do a full review of that. And also the Makeup Geek rebrand. I know there are some mixed feelings about the Makeup Geek rebrand. So I do want to talk about, you know, how I, at the second time I've used them today, I'm going to continue using them. Um, but I do want to talk a little bit about that uh, from an extremely biased point of view. <laughs> but, you know, I'll, I'll try to be as objective as possible on that. I'm going to try to put my friendship with Marlene over on the side, but I do want to give a little bit of like defense on some things there because I think there are some things that, you know, getting lost in translation a little bit with some things. So anyway, all right, we'll get to it. We'll get to it. So before we get started talking here, in the collective brain of Makeup Awesomeness. I do want to say hello to the people that are here live in live chat. Thank you so much for being here if you're here live. If you uh, have never been live, it is 10 a.m. Eastern time. Oh, yeah, and then I have an announcement to make. So, uh, yeah, so it's 10 a.m. Eastern, unless we have an interview. We do have an interview next week. We're going to talk about that in a second. Uh, and I know that's early for a lot of people. A lot of people have religious services, things like that. I do try to do 5 p.m. for the interviews, mostly because uh, I, well, I, I was trying to do 5 p.m. stuff for the people that are on the West Coast, people that, you know, have morning activities. Um, but also a lot of the people that I interview are on the West Coast. So getting up at 7 a.m. just really isn't very nice of me to do it. <laughs> and they probably wouldn't come on <laughs> so uh so yeah so we'll be doing a 5 p.m chat next week but it's usually 10 a.m eastern time because sundays are my family day so i try to get this done checked off by 11 p.m so that i can spend the rest of the day with my family so good morning thank you to those of you that were able to make it live lisa is here consuelo jennifer and mel glitter berserker Bazooka! If you know what that's from, let me know. Um, Monica Loves Beauty is here. Good morning to my friend. Good morning to the lovely and fabulous Georgia Harris. If you've not seen her YouTube channel, definitely check it out. Cheeky897 is here. My girl Debbie Green is here. Ginger and Danny Sherman. Teresa M.O. is here. Her coffee is ready. Erica is here. Carrie Nell, good morning to you. Uh, Jackie and Diesel Darlin. Teresa TTT Beauty is here. The Gold Digger, so good to see you. Erica Chapman and and Wendy. Uh, Tab, good morning to you and our lovely wrench wenches, keeping it a safe environment, a happy environment in the uh, in the chat over there. Just know that the wrench wenches are here to help you, to help it to be a happier environment. Uh, if the wrench wenches scold you for something, it's because you're doing something that's either annoying people or it's uh, something that I've told them to ask you to stop. So please don't take it personally and uh, please listen to them so we can keep it a peaceful chat. All right, so uh, Tab says, yep. <laughs> she says, good morning to you. Good morning to you. Wrench wenches are here. Saying good morning to you. 
Yes. And if you have not hit the like button on chat and you enjoy these chats, definitely hit the like button. It helps me with visibility on YouTube. It really helps a lot. All right. So speaking of uh, the the live chat, I've been teasing on Twitter all week who our interview is going to be. Um, it is a new person in my life. Uh, I just discovered this channel thanks to the community, thanks to you all who have been crazy about like you've got to watch this channel Jen you've got to watch this channel Jen so I guess it was maybe a week week and a half ago I finally was like you know what I forgot I really wanted to check out this channel let me go check it out and I did and I was like I've been sleeping. I've been sleeping on this channel so hard. So I've been putting up t uh, clues all week and I told everybody that I was going to uh, to announce the person. Uh, and the big clue was that she says that you should never trust anyone with a Morphe code. Uh, and that was one that gave it away to people who know. Uh, if you do not know her, her name is T and she owns a channel called Nappy Headed Ahoba, and she is amazing. So I wanted to show you very quickly a clip from her channel. It's one of her more recent videos. It's called Why We Are Not Going To Do This. Uh, wait, sorry, it's really tiny on the screen. What we are not going to do is let these frauds play us in 2020. And it's about uh, influencer marketing things that people have, hold on a minute, I've got things popping up. Let me go back to the the original video, make sure I represent this correctly. So the thumbnail is 10 times the gurus lied to us. There we go. I want to represent it correctly. So let's go ahead and play the clip and see if you remember this. I can kind of out of nowhere. In this installment of 10 times that our faves lied to us, we're kind of going to run the gamut. Now that we've got those disclaimers put aside, let's start off strong. I got two words for you, best fiends. There was a point two to three years ago where pretty much every major beauty influencer was suddenly promoting a game. Talking about, oh, I love to play this game when I'm doing my makeup. Like that doesn't even make sense. This best fiends campaign was far reaching because I must have seen at least a dozen different influencers whom I normally watch. Some of them I don't watch no mo. At least a dozen of the influencers who I watched were promoting this stupid game and it was a uh, it was grating i think what irked me the most about this was just that it made no sense whatsoever i suppose all right so i'm gonna go ahead and switch back over <laughs> Oh, there was an echo on the video. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, so for a better quality version, go over to her channel. Hopefully you were able to hear it enough um, to, to get, a, get an idea. Um, still learning this software and I don't normally play videos from, uh, from a website. So next time I know to download the video and show you directly. So I apologize for the terrible sound on, uh, on T's video. That was my fault. What? It wasn't that bad. Oh, my husband's telling me it wasn't that bad. But still, like, if you want to see the full, mo more awesome version, go over to T's channel. I should have my hair sticking up. It's called Nappy Headed Hoba. She is amazing. She has just the best energy. Just, oh my gosh, I just adore her. So I, uh, I went over to Instagram. I sent her, I realized that she was already following me on Instagram. I was like, yay. So I, I sent her a message and, and I was real nervous that, you know, I really wanted her to say yes. I really want to say yes. And she did. So she will be here answering your questions in live chat next weekend at 5 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, I will be putting up a question thing, a place in the YouTube community tab. There'll also be one on Twitter where you can ask her questions. And uh, yeah, we'll be, we'll be chatting with her next week. So I hope you're excited. If you're not familiar with her, get familiar. You got time, you got a whole week to get familiar. All right, so let's go ahead and move on. Actually, before we do that, let me go over to the chat and see what everybody's saying because I am so excited. Um, let's see, Miss, Mrs. Unnecessary, love a diva with some brutal honesty. I'm definitely going to check her out. She's amazing. Uh, Sarah says, I rather like playing Best Fiends. Well, let me tell you a little story about Best Fiends real quick. So I did get contacted by Best Fiends back then when they were doing the campaign and they sent me an email and I'm telling you, they were paying well. They were paying well. It was the largest amount of money I'd ever been offered to do a mention ever. Um, and I was like, ugh. I downloaded the game. I tried to play it. I legit did not enjoy it at all. I tried to play for about five minutes and I was done. I was like, I can't do this. <laughs> like, I can't do it. I hate the game. So I didn't do it. I, I told him no. But I'm telling you, turning down that much money is, is definitely... Uh, 
there was a moment, but you know, I'm not going to tell you to download and play a game that is terrible. I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to do that. So I didn't. And you know, there, there was more sponsorships after that. You know, that's the thing about YouTube sponsorships is even when you turn something down, there's more sponsorships later, you know, and I just, I have to just, but it was a little bit like <laughs> for a minute, but they were paying very, very well. I will tell you that. I mean, it wasn't like a million dollars or anything, but it was, you know, it was a significant chunk of change. Uh, Adrienne loves tea, hapless beauty. Hello, Andy. He says, you should definitely check out Teresa is Dead. Her channel has me crying with laughter. Totally agree. I love Teresa. She's amazing. I have met Teresa in person. Oh, amazing lady. Amazing. Uh, Julie says, I remember Tati promoting Best Fiends. And I'm not trying to say that these people didn't genuinely like the game. I'm not trying to say that. I'm just saying I didn't like it. So I could not do that. I'm just speaking for myself. I, I'm, you know, so that's that's how, how we're at. Okay, Yoga with Mo says, up next, Kinky Sweat. I know she's friends with T, so, um, and I have not watched as much Kinky Sweat. I've been binge watching uh, T lately, so I haven't binge watched Kinky Sweat yet, but they're, I, it's, it's nothing but compliments, nothing but compliments. And it's funny because when people figured out it was T on my, uh, on my, Twitter, not a single negative comment, not a single one, not one comment that was like, oh, you shouldn't have her on. Like that says something because it's really hard to keep your nose clean here on the internet. It is. So com commendment, commendments. I commend her. So Tiffany says, dude, that Best Fiends promotion was so freaking annoying. That was the start of me not watching as many influencers back in the day, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, I hear you. Okay, so, oh, thank you, Steph, for putting in chat uh, T's channel. Much appreciated. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into our topics for today. Let me kind of flip around, switch over. So we're going to go and uh, we're going to talk about Nikki. Uh, Nikki came out as transgender. Uh, really, really excited for her that she had, like I said earlier, that she has that freedom now. It's just a shame that apparently she was being, this is what she said, that she was being blackmailed and that's why she has said it at this time. Uh, and the person was trying to take that away from her by announcing it before she could. Uh, and that is one of the cruddiest things I've heard in recent days uh, that that's just, you know, I, well, we're going to get into this when we get to Lisa Blandino. Okay. So let's, let's go into this. So people are speculating different people that it could be that are blackmailing her. And I, I don't think that it's, it's fair of me to speculate when I genuinely have no idea. Like, I mean, it could be somebody we know. It could be somebody we don't know. Like there's really no way to know. And there's no way we'll ever know unless Nikki tells us or somehow it leaks somehow, maybe the person will admit it. I don't know, um, but it could be any number of people. So I think saying absolutely ever that it's, we know who it is when we absolutely don't would, is wrong. Um, people were questioning whether it was uh, Jared Blandino's sister. Her name is Lisa. Um, but of course we have absolutely no proof of that. Uh, but she put up a, uh, on her, she, she, <laughs> On her Instagram, on her profile, she puts whatever it is she's thinking in the moment instead of like, a, you know, who, who she is. I don't know. All right. So anyway, let's go ahead and flip over. Transgender, huh? That's not the only thing she's been lying about. Okay. All right. So this is the thing. This is, this is my opinion. I don't think Nikki not telling people she was transgender is a lie. That's my opinion. I don't see that as being a lie. I see that as being keeping part of yourself private in a very public space. Um, and she wanted her art to shine. She wanted to just be Nikki. She didn't want to be, you know, that having an impact. You know, she just wanted to be herself and she's still herself. And I don't, I don't, that's not a lie. Like that's just keeping something private. Like we don't tell you all the things about our whole lives. Like I don't tell you, you know, that, I don't know, what's something stupid I could tell you? Um, I don't know, like dumb things. I mean, so many dumb, th like not dumb things, but there's so many things that I could tell you about my life, really important things that make up who I am as a person, as well as trivial things that really, that also kind of make me up as a person, but they're probably just, you know, little tiny things, but big things about, you know, what made me who I am. I'm not going to share every little thing. It's just, 
you know, especially when she's not a vlog channel, you know, <laughs> like it's, 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 you know, it's up to her what parts of her private life she wants to share. That's not a lie. That's just, that's just my, my take on it. That's my opinion. I don't see that as a lie. So I think that's really messed up that she would say uh, that's not the only thing she's been lying about. Uh, if you aren't, if you don't know, there is some issue with Nikki and uh, her brother, Jared Blandino. And Lisa goes after anybody that says anything negative about Two-Faced she goes after them. She's come after me before. Uh, I'm going to come after, but she's left comments on my videos before. Um, I know she's, she's said things on Tati's channel as well, like uh, left comments on Tati's channel as well, regarding the, uh, her being, she felt like she was disrespected at a two-faced party. Um, but what happened with Nikki was that Nikki re released that power of makeup palette with two-faced and the, I don't know how much is, has known to be true and how much is still rumor and how much is known to be fact. So just take this with a grain of salt because I'm not really sure what has been verified and what hasn't. But the the thought was, was that um, the power of makeup palette, she was really, really proud of it. And then people got it in their hands and they didn't like it. I personally, I gave a pretty positive review. I actually really liked mine. Um, so there's different people have said that they think that Nikki was given one quality and then they released another my thoughts is it's probably not. It's probably because Nikki can take like poo and put it on her face and make it look beautiful. I mean, the woman is ridiculously talented. Like she can do anything with anything. And then when regular folks got it, they were like, this isn't working the way I thought it would kind of thing. Um, also that she wasn't paid properly for the collab, that she was given a flat rate without commissions and that they made a ton of money off of it and that she did not get a fair cut. So those are kind of the rumors. So this is what I'm thinking, Danny, Danny, this is what I'm thinking Lisa's probably, if I call her Danny, it's because I was looking at it on the screen. This is what I think Lisa was probably talking about what she's been lying about. Lisa does not make the best choices on the internet. Um, she, okay, so let's just talk about what, she changed her profile again a couple more times after that, you know, basically backtracking and saying, you know what, I have no problem with transgender people. I just have a problem with liars. It's like, you're not, you're not helping yourself here, man. You're not, you're not helping yourself. And then Jared released a statement. You can see the statement in What's Up in Makeup Today, which is my makeup news show. If you haven't seen it yet, it's in top news. It's in near the beginning of the, if it's not the first story, it's close to the first story of What's Up in Makeup Today. Um, you know, Jared said, basically, I, you know, I don't, I love my sister, but I don't agree with things she says. Her statements do not represent me. I fired her. Like she's not working for Too Faced anymore. Like, I, I'm proud of Nikki, I support her, blah, 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 okay. So Danny changed her profile. This is her current profile. I took the screenshot this morning. And it just says, well, God bless your sweethearts. And it's just dripping with, uh, like just dripping with, with sarcasm, I feel like. Like she's just fuming behind that, I feel like. You know, like I, I, I mean, maybe that's just me, like, putting my own things on her, but I feel like there's some fuming behind that. I don't know, I could be wrong. I could be wrong because that's making assumptions. I could be wrong. So did Jared actually fire your sister? We don't know. Was she ever actually working for Too Faced? We don't know. <laughs> like, there's no real way to know. Um, he could, this is the thing. He could fire her and she could not be working for Too Faced anymore. And he could still be giving her like an allowance kind of situation because she's used to a certain lifestyle. It's just coming from his own personal account versus Too Faced, you know, and Estee Lauder companies. I mean, who knows? I, who knows? We will never know. We will never know exactly what happened. Um, so you just kind of have to go with what you think about whether you feel like, you know, maybe this is the reason why you want to boycott Too Faced. I know that that was, excuse me, that was trending on Twitter was, um, you know, people that were talking about boycotting uh, Too Faced over this, but this is the thing. I mean, this is, Too Faced has had a pattern of, of not so great things. I mean, do you remember the, the Rich Lives Matter cake? That was when I was fuming. I was like, how could you possibly think that's okay? Like, on what planet is it okay to have a Rich Lives Matter cake? I mean, it's just, I mean, that maybe that's just coming from my personal feelings towards Black Lives Matter and my passion for, um, 
you know, supporting that movement. I, you know, I, I'm a very big supporter of uh, Black Lives Matter, and I think that it is a very important movement, and I'm not gonna get super political with you, but I feel like it's an important movement. Um, I know some people aren't gonna understand that, and I'm gonna get a ton of people unsubscribing, and that's fine, that's okay. I suggest that you do a little research on what Black Lives Matter really is before you judge it, um, if you are mad at me right now. So, but anyway, I, I thought that was super messed up, and that was where I was like, and that was the actual, that was Jared himself, not his sister. And well, if, let's be real, he can't control his sister. What his sister does is what his sister does. He can't control her. He can control his own actions and he can fire her if that's what he feels like he wants to do. But he can't control that woman's actions. That's her actions, you know? So I don't know. I feel like that, the, the, the cake should have been the straw, not necessarily the, the sister acting a fool. You know, I feel like Jared did everything he could you know, to to say, hey, I don't support this. I don't know. That's just that's just my my opinion. I, I that's just where I'm at, and it's okay to disagree. It's okay to not agree with me. So you know, that's the way I feel. Let's see what the community says. Wendy says Lisa seems so bitter, and another thing I found weird was she had it on her Instagram bio. Yeah, and that's what she seems to do is she updates her Instagram bio based on what she's currently um, passionate about. Um, Josie says, it's what I teach in crucial conversations. We tell ourselves stories from past experiences, then react what we hear. Until we know the story, we shouldn't speculate. I totally agree, Josie. That's an excellent point. I love that you commented that. Jessica says, I recently bought the natural lust palette from Too Faced and it's awful. Just one of the many reasons I won't be supporting the brand anymore. Gotcha. Um, F Society says, just stop buying Too Faced. They're clearly shady AF. Um, Britt says, oh, hello, it's Britt Clark. She has a YouTube channel as well. Uh, she says, do you know Jared's acting, acting role now? Do you know Jared's acting role now? Oh, maybe he's acting a role like he's, he's, you know, doing the PR thing. Like he's, I don't know. I mean, we just don't know. We just don't know when it comes down to it. Victoria says, the only thing I love from Too Faced is the damn girl mascara, which I also know that not many people liked, but I loved it. I'll find a dupe somewhere. Yeah, I mean, you just have to kind of decide what's um, what's best for you. You know, you, you just have to decide what's best for you. Um, but I, I, I just, there's a lot, the problem is, is there's a lot we don't know. So that's why you have to, you know, take it with, with what it was. All right, we are 23 minutes in. Um, yeah, Steph says that's between Nikki and her fiance, nobody else. Amen to that. That's our business, man. It's our business. So, um, all right. So let's go ahead and switch to the next topic, which is Kat Von D, who has sold her share of her brand to Kendo. Let's go ahead and flip over to her Instagram post. And it says, this past year has been one of the one of great change for me. As many of you know, I gave birth to my beautiful baby boy, launched my vegan shoe line, and now I'm busy prepping to release my long-awaited album in the spring, followed by an international tour. As much as I wish I could balance all of this on top of continuing my makeup line, it has become clear to me that I just can't do everything at maximum capacity. It's hard to admit this since I've always said, you can do everything and anything, but don't. but I don't think admitting one's limits is a bad thing. Let's say, okay. Okay. This is the thing. Okay. So no matter how you feel about vaccinations and about her alleged anti-Semitism, I do have a full video on this, by the way, where I tried to be as objective as possible, present all the controversies so that you had all of that information all in one place. It wasn't, it wasn't available at the time when I posted the video. There were articles that kind of broke down all of her controversies, but there weren't really any videos. So I made a video to kind of break down all of the reasons why people did not like Kat Von D. Um, you know, and it was meant to be more more of an objective, like, here's all the info you decide for yourself kind of thing. So she came out, one of her things was that she said that she was not vaccinating her son, which upset a lot of people. A lot of people believe in vaccination. We're not gonna go back and forth about whether vaccination is good or bad today. I definitely have very strong views on it, but that's not the point of today's, um, today's chat. So she came back with a video that said that she's, this is, this is where I had issue, you know, after all of that. 
was that she said she came back with a video that said she's not anti-vax she just learned a lot and you know she did a lot of research did learned a lot and if she had known there was going to be this kind of reaction she wouldn't have shared it so so this is the thing is you say it was the back not backtracking but it was the the I'm going to try to appease the people who aren't really paying, atten paying attention by saying I'm not anti-vaccination. But basically, all she said in that video was, if I had known you were going to be so mad at me, I wouldn't have told you. <laughs> that was it. So anybody that said, okay, she's not anti-vax, so I'll support her now. That's not what she said. She said, I think that, I think this is me reading between the lines, and I could be wrong, but me reading between the lines is that she's not anti-vaccination for everyone. She seems to be just anti-vaccination for herself and her family. And again, I'm not going to talk about, you know, I don't want to get into the argument about to vaccinate, to not vaccinate. We're not, let's just focus on Kat. So in this post, she's doing the exact same thing. She's not talking about the backlash that was clearly felt by the choices that she made and all of the information that came out about anti-Semitic connections and things that she could, she may have done in the past that may have been anti-Semitic. I'm trying to keep this very vague so that I'm not interjecting my own opinion. Um, you know, she's trying to keep all of that out of it. And just basically just spinning it in a positive way. Look, I'm just too busy. You know, I would love to keep doing my line, but I'm just too busy. Girl, are you being for real right now? Can I zoom this camera? <laughs> like, I wish I could do one of those hard zooms. Girl, are you for real? Are you for real? Okay. Sam Ravendahl got wrecked for using her eyeliner in a video without even mentioning it was the eyeliner because she was just trying to use it up after she'd already purchased it. That's just an example. Like anybody that used Kat Von D on camera, posted about it, did any kind of sponsor thing, got wrecked for it, got wrecked for it. She went from having so many videos made about her products to having crickets because the audience was not having it okay and that's just that's a fact let's stick to the facts that the audience was not having it uh that 10th anniversary line dropped all the reviews went up and if you search for any launch that happened after that it's like crickets there's like four reviews and they're usually from people that have smaller audiences less of a reach so um yeah I, I, this is this is I think we all know and that's what I think makes the post so absolutely ridiculous we all know why she's leaving the brand it's because it's tanking <laughs> there I'm sure that there are still people that are still buying it there, I know there are people that are still buying it there have to still be people people that are buying it but Kendo knows Kat knows that it's her name that's dragging the brand down don't try to pretend like it's something else I mean maybe all of those things are true maybe maybe all those things are true but you, you can't leave out the most important reason why. <laughs> like, it's just so disingenuous. It's just so ridiculous. I just can't even. I just can't even. Yeah. Okay, Fatima, good point. She says, I, oh, I just want to ask why everyone cancels the brands but never cancels Kendo slash Sephora. They've always owned part of the company. And Sephora, that's owned, Sephora is owned by LVMH. LVMH has brands that test on animals. I mean, there's all kind. If you go up far enough, most places you'll end up getting to, to crud eventually. I mean, it's so many things, so many things. Um, so Tab had mentioned, where's Tab's post? Uh, I did. I was following this on Twitter, and I want to say it was. Oh, I can imagine her little. She has little little knives next to her name, and I can't remember what her name is. It starts with an R. Uh, I can't remember, but she emailed Kendo and Kendo said that Kat is not going to be receiving any royalties from the brand anymore once it switches. Uh, it might have already switched over. Um, oh, what's your name? Oh, it's like on the tip of my tongue. I hate when that happens. Ready to glare. I did it. Ready to glare. If you go to Ready to Glare's Twitter, there's a statement that she made about that. That um, 
Where's, where's Tab's post? Because Tab said something that I want to read. There she is. Kendo has stated that KVD will not receive any proceeds after the sale. So I think that makes a big difference to a lot of people. Um, so, you know, yeah. Yeah, Elizabeth says, right, every big company is super shady. Yeah, I mean, it really, when it comes down to, I mean, when you have a lot of people involved, when you have big companies, they're trying to make money, eventually you're going to get something cruddy. Eventually you're going to get something cruddy. Yeah, Julie says, she said, she said, wait, she never should have shared. She needed to be aware of her voice, personal choice, fine, but to share a false narrative. Yeah, I don't think she believed it was false, but we're not going to get into that. Hold on. Shut up, Jen. Shut up. Stop. Because I don't want to get into vaccinated or not vaccinated because I don't want to argue with people. Okay, here we go. Sam Ravindall. Uh, Diana says, Sam Ravindall con contacted Kendo and they said KVD will not be getting any paying or royalties from the relaunch. Uh, will that make me buy the new stuff? I never bought Kat Von D. Probably won't start now. And this is the thing is that like the earlier Kat Von D launches, I thought were really, really good. Like her, her original blush formula was fantastic. Um, her eyeshadow palettes, amazing, uh, really great quality. And then I felt like, like kind of near the end, like that blush that they came out with, like right before the crash, that stuff was crap. And she ended up having to pull it because she said it was pressed too hard. It's like, how am I supposed to believe you? You know, like now that all this has come to light, like how am I supposed to believe you that it was because it was pressed too hard and not just a crappy formula that you came up with and didn't thoroughly test, you know? So yeah. Oh, Tab says she saw it on Samantha's Twitter. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Um, but anyway, oh, people were asking about my shirt. I got this at Buckle. I'll show you. The, well, I have. I don't have the. It's supposed to be warm with a bralette, but it's like, just so you can see what's happening there. But yeah, that's my shirt. <laughs> a lot of people are asking about it. Okay, so that's kind of the way that I feel about it. I'm curious to see whether the brand is going to bounce back after this. Uh, we'll have to see. I just don't know. I think they're going to have to really kick it with some quality. I think that's going to be a big factor because there are going to be people that are going to move on from it and say, okay, she's not attached to it anymore. I'm going to buy it now. Um, there's going to be people that will not because of, you know, previous thoughts and things like that, and they'll never go back to it. But I think what's going to really be the deciding factor for a lot of people is whether the stuff is actually good or not. And I haven't reviewed any Kat Von D on my channel. Honestly, my audience did not want it, did not want, like I can count on no hands how many requests I've gotten since the crash for a review of a Kat Von D product. I can literally count on no hands. I've gotten zero requests for reviews of Kat Von D products since the crash. So, We'll see if anybody, I don't know. Megan, one of our moderators, one of our fabulous people who's been around forever, she says she thinks the brand is dead. Yeah, we'll have to see. Um, yeah, Jessica says they'll have to do an entire rebrand. And the risk of that is, is that the people that are still buying it would have to um, you know, find the new brand somehow. So, you know. Yeah, Mel says, yes, the brand is dead for sure. Fatima, brand is dead, to, dead on arrival, yeah. Yep, yep. Brittany thinks I need a talk show. Well, thanks. That'd be fun. I'd like that. You've never seen my interviews. I love I love the, doing the interviews. It's just I get real nervous about asking people to do interviews. I'm like, because <laughs> I've I've asked a lot of people who either don't felt didn't feel comfortable or just didn't respond, and it's a terrible feeling when somebody is like just ghosts you after you ask them to be on live chat, and then they just never talk to you again, and it's like, <laughs> like I don't want. <laughs> I don't like putting myself in that situation. Okay, so at this point, it is 1034. Let's take a little break, talk about what's on my face today, and then we're gonna talk about the Makeup Geek free brand a little bit. So on my eyes today, Makeup Geek. Okay, I used all of the green shades up in the crease. Uh, I'm not sure the names of these shades. I can pull them out. I did have some people, I can't remember exactly where, might have been might have been on Twitter that we're talking about like the space that's over on the side. Without space, it's really hard to pull these out without damaging the product. So I have this is all of you is the light one. Yeah, don't break it. Okay, and then the middle one is called spilled tea. And then the deepest one is called Enchanted Forest. 
So that's what I have in my crease. And then on my eyes, I have Shimmer Shimmer, which is a shade that's been around for quite a while. I did, uh, when I, or I ordered it, when this was sent to me by Makeup Geek, two of the shades did come broken. Uh, let me get those for you, they're right here. Hold on, hold on, ah. Oh. I saved the pans um, so that I would remember which shades they were. So this is Legend. And then this is uh, Illuminati. Those are the two that came broken. And Marlene is sending me new ones of those. Hi. What's up? Is it too early for pet time? No, it's not too early. You bring in the cat? It's pet time. <laughs> oh, yeah. He doesn't usually bring in the cat. <laughs> Hi, Brooklyn. Yeah. Hi, baby. Hopefully you don't bite me. He's, like he's nice sometimes. And sometimes mm -hmm. he's mean. And it's just whenever he feels like it. He's just on his own. We don't do puppy thing. time. I know. We don't do kitty puppy time. It's no air time. Yeah. I put up some really cute pictures on Twitter of him, of him sitting in front of our TV. We haven't had a TV in our living room since okay. we lived in our old house. Oh, okay. Bye. <laughs> oh, bye, buddy. See you in a little while, honey. Bye, buddy. Bye, buddy. Um, if you want to see some really cute pictures, he uh, was sitting in front of the TV and he thought that the nature show that John was watching on Nat Geo, right? Yeah. He thought, Brooklyn thought it was real. And he was like sitting there like, whoa, like patting at the screen and stuff. They're super cute. They look like he's sitting out in nature. They're really cool pictures if you want to check them out. But um, but anyway, yeah, so I have a cat, if you guys didn't know. His name is Brooklyn, and he's 13, I want to say. I lose track of his birthday sometimes, somewhere in there, 13. I think he's 13. Yeah, that sounds right. Um, but yeah, so anyway, um, other stuff that's on my face, real quick before we talk about the Makeup Geek rebrand. On my cheeks today, I have the Flower Beauty Flower Pots Blush in Peach Primrose. My highlight today, this is, did I buy this? Can't remember. I think this was PR. I think all this stuff is PR. No, not all of it is. This is PR. This is the Milk Makeup Highlighter in Lit. Yes. Da -da -da. That's what I have on my cheeks. And then I have on my lips, I did a crazy combo. I've got, oh, there it is. Okay, so I've got super uh, two dose of colors. This is super natural and chocolate wasted. And then I topped it with a little bit of Too Faced, uh, the melted matte and the gingerbread one. I've been wanting to try this. This was set in PR and I've been wanting to try it. And then I topped it with Fenty Gloss Bomb. So that was uh, my creative lips today <laughs> that I went into. Uh, yeah, and then uh, I did, we'll talk about the blend of full in a minute. So let's talk about the Makeup Geek, Geek rebrand. People are confused by a couple of things. One thing is that the, it's a rebrand, but the logo is extremely similar on here to the uh, the original, well not original, but the Makeup, makeup Geek logo that was previous. People are confused about the, uh, the matrix system and people are confused about the price point. So let's talk about the matrix system first. So this is the little booklet that they sent with the PR kit. And it just talks a little bit about the matrix system. Uh, I'm just going to read it to you real quick. It says, with a new focus on sustainable beauty and eco-friendly packaging, Makeup Geek introduces the matrix system. It will show you how to utilize the eyeshadows you have and create hundreds of color combinations and palettes. Instead of wasting money and materials that end up in landfills, you can take eco-conscious eyeshadow pans and create any palette you desire. No matter your skin tone or eye color, you can use the matrix system to create custom looks perfect for you. This unique system has rows of colors that range from light to deep, giving you a full range of shades to choose from. Let your imagination run wild and create colorful rainbow palettes, neutral ones, or anything in between. Um, and then it just talks about how Makeup Geek is going to have has pre-made ones. Uh, pans are easily removed and replaced with your favorite shades. Uh, there's educational tips on how to create your own. No more tossing palettes after only using one to two colors. Now you can utilize every color you purchase and reuse over and over. So the idea isn't like you can buy the whole big thing. But the idea is you're not really, that's not really what the, the rebrand is about. The rebrand, well, let me, let me, before I go any further, Marlena and I are friends. We text all the time. We're friends. So I'm a little bit, you know, I got that on, you know, you know, just so you know, that's where I'm coming from. Okay. <laughs> and I've been really excited for her. So I want to make sure that the, the communication is clear on it. So the, the concept of it is that you're supposed to create your own palette. You're supposed to create your own nine pan or four pan palette based on your personal preferences. So that's why, you know, when you look at this, oh, it's boring, I've seen this a bunch of times. Well, you're not really supposed to 
use like you can get all of them but the idea is to create a nine pan palette that go you know so you have every color choice basically that you would want so you can create a palette that you'll actually use all the colors rather than buying a palette that's pre-made that you're only going to use three shades and then the rest of it is end up throwing the trash because you're just not going to use it all so that's the concept behind it which i thought was pretty smart but i think that I think it got kind of got lost. I'm really hoping Marlena uh, releases some videos to go along with it. So let's talking talk about the price. So the individual pans are one and a half grams of product. They're five forty nine for one pan of one pan of product. They're one and a half grams. The foiled eyeshadow formula. They're eight bucks for one and a half grams. Okay. Um, the foil formula are the ones that are on the top. They're the two that broke, and then these other guys that are on the top up there. She's also going to have some face products that are $10, some power pigments, which are $8. The nine pan palettes are $33. And then the four pan palettes are $15. So you do get a discount when you get the, the smaller, when you get the curated palettes. So, yeah. Okay, and then the big palette by itself is $20. Bucks. And then later on, you're gonna, we're going to have these life palettes where you can put your cheek products and then your eye products as well. Um, combinations for ever, for eye color and skin tone. So I'm sure she'll have curated ones of those as well. So the price point, okay? I think that where the, the frustration comes with the price point is that Makeup Geek is sold at Target. And when you think of a Target brand, you don't think of, well, how much is the full palette? Full palette is like $125, I wanna say for the full palette. Yeah. Pretty sure. I'm pretty sure it's a, it's not right here, but I'm pretty sure it's $125 for all of the shades here, which is the same, it's similar price, not the same price. It's a similar price to Natasha Denona. Natasha Denona, the pans are smaller um, and you get um, there, I think 129. So they're saying basically the idea is, is okay, these are sold at Target. They shouldn't be Natasha Denona prices. But what I'm noticing is the people that have the biggest complaints are the people that are talking about maybe buying this entire thing instead of going with the matrix system, which is what was intended, which was to buy a nine pan palette for 33 or a four pan palette for 15. That was kind of the idea behind it. Even though, like I said, you can buy it, but that's not really what like the main draw of the matrix system is. Uh, it's supposed to make it easier for you to choose colors for your eyes. I wanna see what the community is saying. Yeah, it's a Fatima says my target is still selling the old logo four pans for 23. So the price has gone down. Um, Wendy says the nine pan palette is the best deal. Uh, True, uh, True Baroness says the little gaps between the pans and the nine pan palettes would drive me nuts. Yes, but the, the problem is, is if these things are sandwiched so close together, like if I try, like let's say I push these together and I try to pull these out, I would need some kind of tool in order to get the pan out. Um, there would, there would have to be some kind of tool. So the space is necessary in order to move the shadows around, but I totally get that. I personally, I think it would be really cool to have, uh, like a cardboard packaging available where you can put them all in. I wish I still had the palettes that I had that were like that, where it's got like a little, almost like a semicircle where you can kind of pop the shadow out kind of thing. Like, I think that would be kind of cool, but if without the space, you just, you can't pull them out and adjust them. So, um, Karina says, so it's like a Z palette. This is a magnetic palette. Yes. That's it's like a, yeah, I guess you could call it like a Z palette. Yeah. It's a magnetic palette. Yeah. Um, Cloverleaf says, I didn't even know Makeup Geek was sold at Target. I don't think they're sold at all Targets, um, but they are sold at a lot of Targets. Banshee Muse wants to know Makeup Geek or Sydney Grace. Mm, okay, I've used the Sydney Grace shadows 15, 20 times, maybe, maybe not that much, but a lot. I've used these twice, so I don't think it's fair for me to compare yet. And also, Sydney Grace has a lot more shimmers, which is my personal preference. So, and they also have duochromes. So, as of right this moment, I would probably say Sydney Grace just because they have my preferences more. I'm not as big of a matte shadow person and the vast majority of these are mattes. So it's based on personal preference. But again, I've only used these twice. 
So I may change on that. But I'm, I'm just going to be completely honest with you. And I, <laughs> it, it, it's like, ah, like it sucks like that I can't say, oh, yeah, I get that makeup gig one. But but honestly, like I've, I've really been loving the Sydney Grace ones. And like I'm just not as much into the matte shadows. Like, so that's kind of the way I'm feeling. Um, so this is the thing. Is they're made in the United States eyeshadows. They're not made in China like a lot of eyeshadows. So they're going to be a little bit more expensive than a CoverGirl palette or something else that you might find at Target. If you look at the back of the eyeshadow palettes that are sold at Target, I would dare to say almost all of them are probably made in China. And it's just a fact that it's cheaper to, to make things in China. It's just cheaper. So you can keep your price point down low. That's why Juvia's Place is so inexpensive, um, which is a fantastic eyeshadow formula. And that's why I'm mentioning it is because their, their quality is fantastic, but they're made in China. So it's cheaper. Uh, when you make something in the United States, it's gonna, the price is just gonna naturally go up. So that's kind of the way I feel about it. And I do feel like if you wanna try them, just try a four pan palette, see how you like it, you know? And, and then, you know, if you wanna get more, get more from there. But I honestly, like, I don't think anybody, unless you have your makeup artist and need shadows for your kit, or you just don't have a big collection, I don't really recommend buying the big ones at this point because it's just, it's a lot of repeat probably from what you already have. Because the concept is you're supposed to pick and choose what you don't have and make your own palette kind of thing. So that's kind of how I, I feel about it. So yeah, KMT says, Sydney Grace is great, but I love my Makeup Geek palette. Uh, Tiffany says, I keep seeing you guys talk about Inglot. What happened to Inglot? This is the first time I've seen them mentioned in years. Okay, so Inglot, I had a bad experience with my Inglot shadows, um, and I was sent some Inglot shadows to try, and I honestly put them over to the side and forgot about them. <laughs> I still need to try them. Um, I'm a terrible YouTuber, but I had a bad experience in that I bought Inglot shadows at an iMats. I bought a palette. It was really, I think it was like $80 or something for the palette I created. What's that? Did you have to buy them twice? Yes. You lost them? Yes. So my idiot self had my bag that I had of all my stuff that I had purchased and I set it down and I walked this way and I walked back and my bag was gone and all my stuff was stolen. And I wanted to try those Inglot shadows so badly that I repurchased them. So I ended up spending like $160 on this Inglot palette. It was mostly pastel shades and I ended up not liking them. And then I heard later that the pastel shades are their worst shades. So I never really bought any more, uh, which is my fault. I should I should have tried it again, but I, I didn't. I couldn't, I just couldn't after that. I was like, I wasted $160 on shadows that aren't very good. So, you know. Um, Broken Wench wants to know, why is a magnetic palette called a Z palette? It was the company, at least to my knowledge, the, the company that originally created magnetic palettes. It's kind of like Kleenex. You know, people call it a Kleenex instead of a tissue because people just know Kleenex as the tissue people. Z palette were the magnetic palette people, so that's why. Uh, Zaddy Doll says, Mama Shauna, the size is very similar. Uh, I'm not sure. What did Shauna say? I lost it. Oh, no, no, I lost her, I don't know. Um, yeah, so I mean, so far, as far as the Makeup Geek shadows, I'm really, really enjoying using them. I find them very easy to use. I do have swatches over on my Instagram. Those are one dip swatches. I had some, I, I took forever to take those pictures because I kept taking pictures and not liking them, but they do build. Those are one swipe swatches. Uh, so if I'd done two swipe swatches, they would have looked more opaque. Um, for most of them build really nicely. Uh, there's a couple of them that still stay a little bit patchy, but for the most part, they build very, very nicely. But you can check out all the swatches over on my Instagram. I have it in three different lighting environments for you so you can see. Um, Are the Makeup Geek shadows the same formula as they used to be? I don't know. I should ask. I honestly don't know. They probably didn't hear me. Oh, oh, sorry. I should repeat John's question. Are the Makeup Geek formulas the same as they used to be? I honestly don't know. I wish I knew, because that's a great question. Well, somebody asked that. Yeah, it's a great question. Uh, which one, uh, all things, Irene says, which one isn't the alternative, the Cocoa Bear shade? I believe it's like uh, Jaguar Bear or something like that. <laughs> it's something like, something like that. I don't know if she has the shade names in here. Oh, she does, hold on. Cheetah Bear, I said Jaguar Bear. Cheetah Bear, I think is the one that's supposed to be. Um, the one that's like Coco Bear, because Coco Bear was named after her ex, which was not a good situation. And if the shade needed to stay, the name needed to change. 
So, uh, but anyway, okay. So any other things about the Makeup Geek rebrand? I think that's all kind of I wanted to say about it. Uh, I do want to move on to the Blendiful and talk about some of the things I've seen so far and give a quick little first impression. But again, I'm gonna do a full review and like actually test this. So I just used it for the first time today. And one of the things that I saw on the channel Seeking Alexandria, she was talking about, she thought it was gonna be bigger. I have a very small head. <laughs> I like when for the longest time when I was younger I had like when I was like in my early 20s I had to buy children's sunglasses because my head is so small so I know the small brain comments are coming I know okay it's fine I'll, I'll, I'll deal with it so this against my face is very large it takes up my whole cheek okay but I would imagine people that don't have the same size head as me would find this to be a lot smaller so just keep in mind the size of Tati's head compared to your head <laughs> and whether that would be, you know, I, I, I can see why some people might think that it's bigger than it is, but it is big on me. This is the the small blendiful. Oh, by the way, these are purchased. Uh, she, I, they are being sent in PR, but I, um, I haven't gotten them yet. So these are the ones that I purchased. Oh, mm, John's checking my makeup here. Hold on a minute. Oh my goodness. It looks like I'm bleeding. Man, how long has it been like that? Oh. It's because of the lip gloss. <laughs> okay. That look better? I hope so. Oh my gosh, that was annoying. All right. But anyway, okay, so what I've been doing, let me tell you kind of what my plan is. So what I've been doing is I bought a couple of other things. I bought the Beauty Blender version of it. Uh, what is this thing called? I forget. I don't know. But anyway, it's a, the Beauty Blender version. So it's got velour on one side. Uh, as far as the feeling of it, this the Tati one is definitely softer. Um, but it's the same kind of concept. Uh, and then the other side is a sponge, kind of like a beauty blender on the other side. And you can put your finger in here. You can put your finger in here. Uh, one thing they advertise you can do with it is you can flip it over so you can use both sides. Um, so this I have used two or three times. I also bought some of these things from Ulta, just the regular little puffs. And I've used this, trying to use it the way that this was advertised to be used. And we're gonna compare them and see what we think. Um, so just right away from using this today, one of the advantages that the Tati one has is that it is so much larger. I mean, you look at the different sizes, the process goes a lot faster because it is so large. It's also a lot thinner too. Um, so it is easier to bend. This one bends, but it's a little bit, because of the size and because of the thickness of it, like it's, it's smaller and thicker, so it's harder to, to bend to get in the little spaces. I do appreciate the points. The points are very, very helpful um, on both of these where this doesn't have a point. Uh, but we'll do a full review and I'll do like a side by side. I was thinking about doing a side by side like this side and this, like this and this, just to kind of show you because this is like the cheapest alternative of like what, you know, what the true real differences are. So we'll see. Uh, there are a ton of different options. I also bought a couple of other things that I don't know if I'm gonna use. I bought the Laura Mercier poofy thing. Um, I bought that. I think I'm gonna return this because this isn't even close to the same thing. I thought this was gonna be the same. This is the Silico blender, silicone and puff. So I thought it was gonna be like velour on one side, but it's not. It's just a different kind of silicone on one side. So it's the stupid silly sponge on one side and a like slightly softer stupid silly sponge on the other side. It doesn't compare at all. So I'm probably gonna return that one. And then I got from Amazon, I think they're still upstairs. I got some puffs from Amazon that I'm gonna try. So I really wanna make sure I'm educated about this because I'd never used a puff like this before uh, this video. I wanna make sure I'm really educated before I make the video and make sure I'm coming from the most knowledgeable place possible to give you the best information possible. So um, that's, that's where I'm at. But I do have um, some Amazon ones coming as well. And we'll really compare it and see whether the price point is worth it for this. Um, and I have a feeling the answer is going to be it depends. Um, it's going to depend on a lot of different factors. And depending on which factors are important to you, that's, that's what's going to be the, the deal breaker or the deal maker for you on the Blendiful. Um, but I, I'll, I'll dig all into that. I'm going to show you it all. So stay tuned for that. I had different videos planned for this week, um, but that's I think the Blendiful is going to have to be filmed this week. So hopefully by Friday, I'll have that up for you. Um, yeah. So let's see. Angie says, I'm a huge Tati super fan, but wouldn't it be the same as the Velour Puff from Amazon? See, that's what I'm finding out. So I ordered some from Amazon. We're gonna find out. We're gonna find out, Angie. Um, Evil 
Evila Gomez, does Tati change for charge for shipping or is it free after a certain price? I think, let me look at my receipt, hold on. Do, 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 do. I can let you know. Blendiful. Let's see what my, okay, let's see. Order confirmed, Blendiful, $18. Shipping was $2.95. And my Maryland state tax was a dollar eight, so I paid twenty-two dollars and three cents. I don't know if you get a break. I think you do get free shipping. Let me see. Oh wait, I didn't order any. I only order. I didn't order the Tati Beauty palette, so I can't speak to that. I don't know. Uh, Flannel Beauty says yes, it's worth it every dime. I wash mine in a bra bag in the washing machine. You cannot do that with the beauty blender. Not to mention you get two. There you go. Mama Shauna says, try swiping, then patting seems to be what everyone likes best. And so far, at least with this, what I've been liking is patting and rolling similar to the Beauty Blender. Swiping with this is not cute. Swiping with this is real not cute. <laughs> You can see me using this, by the way, on uh, the getting ready with me for What's Up and Makeup for this week. Uh, there's a link at whatsupandmakeup.com. There's also a link under the under today's What's Up and Makeup video to see me using this. Real not cute. Real not cute. Um, this one today, I did like the pat and blend. And because it's so large, what I did was I swiped the foundation on my face and then I just went like this. And because it's so large, it covered a lot of space very quickly. So... But I've seen a lot of people swiping and then patting to kind of get it around and then pat it. But patting is really important, I think. Uh, Tiffany says, when you do the review, can you describe the backing? Weird, I know, but I've got texture issues with the acrylic backing on some puffs. The feeling on my fingers makes me flip. Okay, so this does not have any kind of backing on it. It's the same on both sides. It's both just very soft. It reminds me a lot of um, like those blanket throws. It feels like a throw, um, but it's got some cushion inside, some real soft cushion inside here. Um, but this one, this has got like that smooth, like I think this is what you're talking about as far as the backing, the Ulta brand ones. Um, yeah, I'm with you with the texture thing. I'm weird with uh, with texturing. But this one, with texturing, with textures, <laughs> I'm weird with textures too, so I totally get it. Um, the acrylic backing. This one doesn't have acrylic I don't know, is, is that acrylic? Is that considered acrylic? I don't know. But it's like got a smooth back. This does not have any of that. It's both, it's the same on both sides. Heather says, I pay $4.95 to ship the Blendiful and the palette. Gotcha. Britt says, it feels like a Sherpa sweatshirt. I don't have one of those, but that sounds like it might be accurate. <laughs> Thank you for that, Britt. Chelsea, you should test three in the review. Cheek, uh, cheek, cheek, and forehead. That's an interesting idea. Interesting idea, Chelsea. What's up, you okay? You bringing Haley over? You can bring Haley over if you want. Uh, Allie says, can you do a wet versus dry when you're using the Blendiful? I don't think that this would be good wet. I think that would be not a good idea. I think that would be a bad idea. Like until I see someone else doing it, that would be a bad idea. Um, the makeup eraser, towels. Julie says the makeup eraser, it's not, well. <laughs> Hi, Haley. Hi, honey, are you going to come sit with me? You can come sit with me for a minute. Oh, okay. The makeup eraser towels don't have the cushiness in the middle, which I think makes a difference. Um, the also the like not I guess you call them fibers or whatever. Like, but the length of the things here it's much longer and it's not as compact. So this when you push it up, the 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 fire I guess you call them fibers. I don't know are much shorter than a, a makeup eraser. I can't really see using a makeup eraser for the same purpose. It's floppy um, and I don't, I just, I don't, I mean, maybe people do it, I don't know. I've never tried it, but it just seems like a weird thing to use. I don't know. I feel like this would be a lot more functional just because it's it's got some stiffness to it where the makeup eraser is just real floppy. And you can use anything you want, whatever works for you, but you, you just have to, you know, I don't know, like we were saying earlier, you have to figure out what your deal breaker is. You are so squiggly. You are so squiggly, little girl. She's sitting on my lap. Hi, baby. <laughs> um, Cynthia says, aw. She says, well, I noticed a difference in your makeup and it looks beautiful. Thank you so much. Yeah, I used, um, today I used for my foundation, I used, what did I use today? Don't lick my face, don't lick my makeup. 
Um, I can't remember what I used today. Okay, all right, you're getting down. She's too squiggly. All right, hold on. Let me go get what I used today on my face. Here it is. Okay. So what I'm noticing about all of these is that um, the, the coverage is more. No matter which one you use, the coverage is more. So I use the Pure Lease BB Cream, and it looks more like a medium coverage foundation than a BB Cream. Um, Zaddy Doll says the fabric is a polyester blend. Thank you so much for that. Michelle Wong in the house. Hi, Michelle. Definitely check out Michelle Wong's YouTube channel, one of my favorites. Um, Helen says someone has a video out using both the Blendiful and a makeup eraser, and although I didn't watch it, it does start with you can tell which side I use the Blendiful. Can you tell which side I use the Blendiful on? That's interesting. That's very interesting. Yeah, we'll see. She was determined to get kisses. I just don't want her licking my makeup off my face. I don't think that's a good thing. And plus, we've talked about this. I think I don't like textures on my face. Like, I know that's really horrible, but. Um, thank you to those of you guys asking. Tab uh, clarified. Haley is a Cavalier King Charles Spaniel. She's amazing. Um, okay, so we have, oh my gosh, it's 11 o'clock. It's time to go. Aw, that makes me sad. Um, yeah, it makes me sad. Okay, Stacy says, Jen, please compare the Blendiful to the Forever Puff that Tati has used for years. I did not order that one. I would imagine it's similar. It's probably the, the base, the, the template for it. And then she just changed it up a little bit. That's what I would imagine. I don't know, though. I don't know. Um, I have not tried the Bite Foundation, Samantha. Shauna, uh, they were trying, wait, what? They were trying balloons and condoms not that long ago to apply makeup, if you remember. That's true. I remember that. That was not cute. And also uh, male body parts. That was a thing that happened once, and that was not a good thing. Um, but this, 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 I don't know. I think it's, I think it's got some potential. But I have, the jury's still out. I just used it one time, and I'm not ready to review after just one time. But, all right, I got to go. Yeah, <laughs> Tab forgot about it. I think we all blocked that out. I think we all blocked out the use of uh, stupid things to put our makeup on, like the balloons and the condom thing. It's been a minute. It's been a minute. That was a while ago. That did go by really, really fast, Tiffany. All right, I got to go. Remember, next week, 5 p.m., with tea from Nappy Head and Jehovah, your homework from the teacher is to go watch her channel and get familiar. I definitely, if you're going to watch just one video, I recommend her new one called what we are not going to do is let these frauds play us in 2020. And the thumbnail shows, it says 10 times the gurus lied to us. She actually has two of those. They're both really, really good. Um, a lot of her videos are around that same kind of vein and they're, they're really, really good. So definitely highly recommend and we will see you next week. Uh, mad love to you. Have a great week. Thanks for being here live and I will see you in a video very, very soon. Bye.